Uh, welcome back to Nathan's commentary video series. Uh, we're going to encourage you to like, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the uh, like button, comment in the comments. But today, Nate wants to talk to you about how the internet's changing the world. Yeah, well, I we first got dial up when I was about twenty. Um, I had used the internet a little bit at high school, but we got dial up when I was about twenty, and by the time I was about maybe 23 or 24, I think we had broadband. Um, YouTube came along when I was about maybe 24. Um, and, and so YouTube, I think it was when I was about 24 that YouTube came along. Um, now, I think the thing with the internet is a lot of people are very neg negative about the internet. They say, oh, children are, are getting misinformation. Children are getting confused about what the truth is children basically the argument is everybody's getting misinformation on the internet but the way i think about it is it's the tool right and it's how you use the tool and my support worker here alan said to me something a minute ago he said you know you can use a knife to butter bread or you can use a knife to stab someone right so you know and you know i acknowledge certainly there is a lot of problems particularly with things like pornography corrupting how people view sexuality and the mass um, propagation of pornography and violent pornography on the internet, you know, that is bad for society. Uh, um, and the misinformation and the false narratives that get sold to people on the internet uh, is bad for society. But I tend to um, want to look at the positives of the internet. Um, now, when I did Open Foundation in 2012, I studied business organization and management and I had to write an essay on globalization um, and we were learning about how information technology was changing the world and that really stuck with me having to write that essay on globalization um, and now when I talk about the internet and when I talk about social media I talk about it as a tool to empower communities to act like um, you look at the Arab Spring revolutions where a bunch of um, communities came together to overthrow uh, throw oppressive regimes. They all coordinated their their resistance on social media, um, and social media facilitated the Arab Spring revolutions that took place. Um, that's the positive use of the tool of social media and the internet for people, for communities to coordinate action and to coordinate political action, um, and to co and for communities to coordinate in general. Um, that is the positive use of social media and the tool of the internet. Um, and you know, with YouTube, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube that's just not true. Um, you know, and there are a lot of platforms, a lot of independent pr producers on YouTube promoting information, uh, misinformation. But what's also on YouTube is collections of university lectures from University of California, Berkeley, collections of lectures from Yale University, collections of lectures from Harvard University, you know, uh, and that's the stuff I look at. And that's why I'm so informed because I use the tool of the internet correctly. And it's probably because I've had some level of university education. So I understand how to evaluate evidence. And I understand how to think critically. But my mother had already taught me that before I did open foundation anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, you don't have to go to university to know the skill of uh, evaluating evidence correctly and being critical. We can t we should be teaching that in primary school. Um, so when I go on YouTube and when I go on the internet, I'm looking at university content. Um, I'm looking at science content. You know, I'm reading science blogs that are credible and I'm reading news and current affairs from credible sources. Um, so I'm getting all the right information. And it used to be if you wanted to get the information in the 80s, like... You'd have to go to the library, oh, I want to study what Plato said today. So you've got to go and buy a book on Plato and then you've only got one book giving one account of what Plato said and dealing with part of what Plato said. Um, and then and then if you borrow it from the library, you've only got it for a few weeks and then you've got to go back and borrow it again. And then if you want to hear another interpretation or some other aspect of Plato's work, you've got to go and look around all the libraries and find where another book that gives a slightly different version of events or an, an account is. And if you want to collect, you know, 20 books 
on what Plato said. You've got to spend 10 years finding all these books on what Plato said. But now, if you want to know what Plato said now, you've just got to go to YouTube and look up what Plato said and you'll find an audio book. You'll find 20 audio books on what Plato said and you'll find 50 other documents on what Plato said and you can sit there the whole day immersed in what Plato said for weeks. And the same is for any... Um, other information that you seek if you seek information about political philosophy all you've got to do is quick google and if you know how to discern what is credible information and who are credible institutions presenting information you can study hundreds of documents and you can sit there and you can do a binge for weeks just studying university material and that's what I did at about 27 years old just after I moved into Newcastle I was getting around doing art and stuff and me and my mate um, we were information junkies we're information junkies you know and what we do is we just sit around all day smoking bongs and looking at university content on the internet you know and we would sit there and we would chew through tutorials and we would chew through lecture series you know psychology history geography biology um, quantum physics you know, everything, and all coming from universities. So, um, you know, my view is the internet is a tool, um, and if you have the right skill set of critical evaluation, you should be able to find the correct information, and you should be able to enhance your knowledge of the world without even needing to participate in the education system or on top of your participation in the education system. So, um, and back to the stuff about the Arab Spring and when I did studied globalization at uni the other thing that social media and the internet is doing is making us a global community you know i couldn't if i wanted in the 80s if i wanted to be friends with someone in japan we'd have to write handwritten letters to each other and pay exorbitant fees to call each other if i want to be friends with someone in japan now i've just got to go on youtube on the internet and get on a japanese chat room and i can meet 50 people in japan so we're becoming a global community you know we're all networked now Everyone can communicate now. Now we can all come together and we can all talk about our lives and we can share our life experiences and we can share our stories about who we are as humans and the whole global, you know, we're becoming one networked global community all with immediate ability to get to know very personally anyone around the world that we want. All the barriers have dissolved that held people back from networking. Um, so, you know, I believe that the internet is creating a global community where we can all be close, we can all know each other personally and we can relate and we can communicate and we can talk about the world and the way forward. Um, and as I said about the Arab Springs, people are also networked to take important action when, when, when they need to take important action. Social media and the internet can facilitate them to take important action. And with regards to misinformation, yes, the information does, yes, the internet does give a platform for actors to present misinformation, but the um, internet also does give a platform for actors to present accurate information that otherwise wouldn't have been presented. Um, you know, I deal with freedom of information releases. It's not a popular subject, and it's not a subject that many people are familiar with. You know, people still don't know about MK Ultra. People don't know about the security community, CIA, ASIO, and what they do. Um, People aren't or in the community aren't aware of freedom of information releases. They don't know what declassified documents are. So it's an unpopular narrative, and it's a narrative that's not well understood by the general population. But I deal with that. Um, and since the media doesn't want to cover this stuff, since the media doesn't want to cover freedom of information releases and the information that I, I study, I take it upon myself as an independent actor on the internet to present to the best of my ability, my account of this information that I have studied, and I hope that everything that I present is reasonably accurate, fair and true. So I'm a sincere actor using the tool of the internet to present my research, which I hope will be informative for people. Um, so, you know, it's like Alan said, you know, you can use a knife to butter bread or you can use it to stab someone, it's a tool. It has good uses and bad uses. And if you use the internet properly, you'll become super informed. 
you'll understand the world better. You'll be able to study science. You'll be able to study history, psychology, biology, whatever subject you want. All the information in the world is out there. You, so if you have the skills to discern what is accurate, um, you should be able to beef up your knowledge so much more than you ever could have in the 70s or the 80s. You know, you had, like I said, you had to go to the library, find the books, borrow the books for a few weeks, then you'd have to take them back, then you have to borrow them again, you know. Now it's all just at the tip of your fingers. You can just get your phone out and read the news walking down the street. So so if you know how to use the internet properly, you should become a super informed citizen, which is what we should all want. You know, I do believe that knowledge is the path to a better life, and the more knowledge and information you have, the more peace of mind you will have, and the better you will interact with the world you live in. Um... So, yeah, so I do think ultimately that the internet is improving humanity. We have this problem of people who don't know any better getting misinformation and we have these problems of things like hardcore pornography corrupting how people behave. Um, But, you know, nothing is ever all good or all bad. I choose to look at the positives of the internet and how it empowers people to learn and how it empowers people to expand their knowledge base and how it networks us as a global community and brings us closer to uniting. Um, The internet is what is going to unite humanity through the interconnectivity of people and their ability to communicate with each other and to learn and grow and share ideas. Um, And that must be the attitude of all these universities that put all their content up on the internet for free. You know, they're, they're removing any paywall and they're saying, here, learn, you know, go crazy, learn. You don't have to come to uni and pay tens of thousands of dollars in hex debt to learn this stuff. You can just sit at YouTube and watch our Harvard tutorials and you can learn it all, have knowledge, be liberated with truth. You know, that's the attitude of these universities that put their content on the internet uh, and on YouTube and that's my attitude and that's why I watch that content so I can be informed without being bound to the institution of university because I despise institutions. My view is that institutions brainwash and indoctrinate people. Um, So yeah, I do believe um, that the internet is going to evolve humanity and and make us a more interconnected species with more access to information. You know, we've got guys now on welfare who, who, who failed in the education system for whatever various reasons, family issues or, or upbringing, but they can sit at home on YouTube and they can, watch, they can watch university content and they can get informed and they can learn how to live better lives and make better decisions. Um, and all the university knowledge in the world is accessible to guys on, in, living in poverty in Africa who can still manage to get access to an internet connection and then can learn, and people with smartphones who are in poverty, they can learn anything they want immediately. Um, so what we have to do to make the tool of the internet good for society is we have to start teaching critical thinking skills in primary school. We have to make sure that everyone in our country who has capacity to understand critical thinking can critical think and can reason and can use logic and then people will find the right information because all the information is out there now and that's the beauty of it it's all out there there's no more barriers the barriers are all gone you don't have to go to the library anymore you don't have to spend years searching for all this information it's all there at your fingertips in your smartphone so i do believe the internet is going to elevate the consciousness of our civilization and make our species more intelligent, more knowledgeable. And after we somehow resolve these issues of misinformation and like stuff like hardcore pornography and stuff like that, we're going to find that the result of the internet is going to make us a more informed and more intelligent species. Um, so yeah, I do believe it's the golden age of liberation of truth and knowledge and the new enlightenment. Um, brought on by the information technology revolution. I think it's a good thing, and I'm not going to sit in this bandwagon with these people who want to say that the internet is destroying the world. The internet is making the world a better place, is my view, and it will only get better as people get more knowledgeable and more intelligent. So drop a comment in the comment section what you think about the internet and how it's affecting society, guys.